Right, well, many of you remember the Signature 9, which is a hell of a success, but over the last... Um, oh, by the way, the reason it was a success is completely freestanding, and people like a freestanding antenna, don't they? This is about 6.87 metres long. It's called a Rapide. And we've had this on test now for about a year on a self-supporting system. So this, the Rapide Plus, right? It's exactly the same as the Rapide, but it's the Plus because it comes with a, excuse me, a ground post, 31, 32 millimetres, an inch and a half, just under, and it slips over the top. Um, now, when you put that post in the ground, I mean, I, I don't put concrete on, but they do move a bit, okay? Because I'm always taking my stuff out the, out the ground. If you just put a bag of um, postcrete or something in the ground, that'll work fine. I've got some pictures here I can show you. But anyway, there's a couple of changes to the new 24 spec Rapide, which you may like. The first thing is it's a, it's a metal cap, alloy cap, and the, the housing itself is alloy as well. So we supply a little clip that goes here to insulate the driven plate from this because it is conductive okay now I haven't prepared these I prepared some of these earlier all right but that slips on there and you can screw the cap back on now may I suggest if this is for absolute permanence you leave the cap off completely alternatively take the rubber bung out However, taking that rubber bung out is easier said than done. I've got a picture here of what it looks like when I, um, how do I get that up? I got a picture here. That bung is pretty thick. And I had to sort of give it a good hammer. But and then you can put the cap back on, you see. Now, just before I get into the ins and outs of this, if you want to slip the pole on and off periodically, don't put the cap on lay this bit on the ground obviously it's got the um it's got the bend up in this example I, I built all this earlier on you know and i put all the nuts and bolts on it and everything else and this is a two mil thick 51 50, 52 51 alloy right with a bent up so239 goes in here put your ground plates uh, ground radials on here leave it on the ground permanently okay you might want to put a weed mat around it maybe something like that permanently and then all you need to do is undo the so239 lift the whole antenna off and you can put it on a fence post do some maintenance or whatever unfortunately if you leave the cap on then this will be pulled up with it you've got to disconnect all the the radials and that sort of thing so natively in quarter waves it does 30 to it'll do 40 but let me just do what natively it does in quarter waves it will do 30 in 20 17 15 12 and 10 and then you get a tune on six meters which roly sometimes uses on openings in um new zealand because it's summer over there. it's winter here right now i've just just run through the pictures i took for the website this is out in the field right now in fact i'll put my radio on now because we'll fire up so you can see the six elements it goes straight up the pole it might look clunky, clunky here, but it's my, I was doing some development, so there we are. But it's completely guileless, you see. You, if I zoom in here, you'll see there's no guys. It's just sitting there on that ground post on its own. And of course you get the new gray plates now, lovely. There are marine, I call it marine hardened, but in white is the sort of stuff they make furniture and all that sort of stuff on like a Sunseeker yacht, okay? But it comes in a gray. So I buy grey plates. It's three eighths of an inch, nine point something millimetres. That's pretty heavy plates actually. Um, but they're completely UV stable, you see. And that's the cap after I got it out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds whether we just take this cap off, leave it off, put it in a drawer, and then leave your ground plate on, on the ground. There's a the little herby clip there, look, to insulate it. It's called a Herbie clip because it was invented by a man who's apparently his name is Herbie. Right, 40 metres, so about two feet up, or 60 centimetres, halfway up the pole basically, I wound 13 wraps. And you can see I did a little, a little, um, uh, two little loops, you know, with a bit of shock cord, just to, to make it nice, that's all. 
and then we supply one of those HCL speed clamps just to hold the, the driven plate in place. And then you get a few more speed clamps as well so that, um, you know, the pole doesn't slip. The first four sections anyway. The other sections are so light. Once you, I mean, give it a good grip, a good squeeze, and a good tight, it should be there forever. If you're a bit worried about it, maybe a little bit of tape will be fine. But that's mine now. Of course, it's in the middle of the winter and it doesn't look very nice. Good. The cut chart, I'm actually uh, redeveloping the cut chart. The cut chart stands as it is. I'll put it in the description for you. It's also on the uh, in the user guide. I want to do. I want to redo all the user guides, actually. <laughs> Don't tell me about it. Now, if you're worried about... Um, how to build a DX command? Some people are. I've got some odds and ends around here. I'll just show you actually. When the, when I when I do the cut chart, um, I allow for the fact of about six seven millimeters, maybe just over a quarter of an inch, where you can you just do that. I bend mine over, and then I get my clunky special crimp tools. You can use a blunt. Side cutters as well works quite well, and I put that in there, and then I straighten that back out. And I've stopped soldering to be honest; it's a waste of time. But then all I do is I get a bit of. Um, we supply this glue line heat shrink. Best to put that on at the beginning, particularly if it's a forty meter element, and it's just a case of heating up. Wendy bought this little Dremel heat gun for all sorts of reasons. I've got become rather addicted to it. I just want all the glue to, you know, melt. And there we are. Now we can't get water in here. It won't corrode and your element will be fine. Some people say, why don't you do, why don't you supply ring connectors? And to be honest, uh, I've never felt the need. Once it's, once it's on the plate, right, that's the driven, take the driven plate. Once it's on here, is that too hot? Might be. Um, it, it's fine. It doesn't even if the wing nut comes a little bit loose, it still stays on. Don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. Same with the radials. And in fact, if you're worried about radials and putting four radials in one of these four connectors, I'll just do that for you now. It it, it will go on. Uh, we need four bits of wire. It's just some scrap here, you know. Same system. Just over a quarter of an inch, six mil. By the way, someone's going to ask, what are these? Because they often do. I don't know, they were sent to me by a very kind man in America. This one's from Ideal Industries. They seem to work quite well. I prefer the kind of automatic ones where you just go click, click good quality ones you've got to spend thirty dollars to get a reasonable one now i just remembered i've made a mistake here but it won't matter i normally cut these a bit longer uh, so i can twist them together a little bit but that'll just be enough to hold on right at this point in time you should really put your glue lined on because it will go on contrary to popular belief there we are. Just hold these together. And that'll go in there fine. So that because the thing is, a lot of people make this more difficult than it really is, and it and it honestly isn't. I didn't try and make a complicated antenna. Sometimes people think that everything should be complicated. Your radials can be any length you like. I'm about to do an experiment. As I said, I'm about to do an experiment where the average length will be about two meters, just over six feet long. There we are. I mean, you can fit four radials per thing. Or you could have two four connectors. You can have eight, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, eight, 48. Plenty. Plenty. By the way, Dr. George Brown in the 20s, when he did his... 
I call it a myth. The 120 mate radial myth. It's not a myth, right? But that was particularly looking at shortened radiators, okay? Whereas Rudy Sevens and I have proved that it's not a shortened radiator. You know, 16 quarter waves is absolutely ample. Even eight quarter waves or 16 eight waves uh, or even less. I mean, I've done a lot of my... Te I mean, I spoke to Rowley the other day on this antenna. So Rowley's ZL1BQD and I'm in the UK. And that's about as far as you can get, OK? Um, and he could hear me five and five. I'll play the clip now, actually. Zulu Lima 1, Bravo, Quebec, Delta. Rowley, hello, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Colonel. You're 555. Yeah, 55, Rowley. I'm on the little rapide, the little baby one. Uh, uh, we're doing uh, peaking about 400 watts this morning, Rowley. Over. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I reckon that's about two degrees off the horizon, uh, Rowley. <laughs> ZL1 BQD M0XXT. Thanks, Rowley. All the best. 73. And that was on 20 metres. Bandwidth is absolutely fine. Bandwidth on 40 is fine as well. I'll just prove that to you. Rappy Plus. There we are. All right, top left of the screen is the SWR. Okay, so that's at 184. I'll put it on the right VFA. I mean, I can get the meter out and everything, but I'm just saying, okay? Now, I think this is tuned for the American, so this will go all the way up to 7.3. If we come down 100 kilohertz to 7096, it's just creeping up. Just creeping up. FT8, just above there. 1.4 to 1, look. So it's about even with the coil, the bandwidth is fine. 20 meters is fine as well. There's literally nothing showing. You can't, you can't, you can't even detect it. So bandwidth's great, very efficient, remember. It's possibly one of my favorite antennas because it's so small and just works. Try not to do 80 on it if you can help it because 80 is, uh, 95% of the time, anyway, on 80 metres, you're not working DX. The chances are, if you're on 80 metres, it's, you know, talking to someone a thousand miles away, up to, and a low to the ground dipole, well, you know, house height or whatever, 40, 50 feet, will just give you that huge 80 metre bump and you'll still work DX. In fact, I was on a low dipole the other night and worked into the US on 40 metres. Matt, MW7, CIH, please stand by. Who's the station ending Oscar? Yeah, Roger. Whiskey, America, Three Ocean, WA Israel, across the pond, Callum. Uh, good morning to you. The name here is Mike. You're only a four and four, 44, four and four in the West Virginia, Callum. I didn't realise I was on the low dye bowl. I thought I was on this little thing at the same time. So what's the price of this? Right, we're selling it at 289. It's also available from DX Engineering. Uh, that should be in stock literally within the next week. Martin Lynch have got it in stock for the rest of the world and the whole of Europe. But remember, if you buy from Martin Lynch, you'll get um, tax paid, all right, uh, for Europe. So there'll be no additional charges, that sort of thing. But as you can see here, undo the SO239, the pole comes off. Um, it's fairly hidden. Nice antenna. Every band for £289 efficiently, and that's the point. No coils, traps, baloney, nothing. OK. I got a bit of a sore back this morning, so I'm not as enlightening as I normally am. May the force be with you. Enjoy your radio. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye for now.